Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dulan Mitra Auditorium. We have all assembled here to meet a very eminent professional, Mr. Kundana Kumar Lal. Before I start the program, I would call upon stage our chief guest, Mr. Kundana Kumar Lal, and request him to take his seat. So please. I would also request our Honourable Principal Sir to come to the days and take his seat. Sir, please. speed up with some kind of an activity specifically the industrial projects applying to the government organization etc etc and that's one of the efforts that we are planning and today we have a special guest with us Dr. Kundana Kumar Lalji, a president of a VT foundation as I am saying the world is saying probably he will speak more in that area the necessity to be updated with respect to the information of an, and knowledge of an artificial intelligence. What is it? It's not necessarily present yet. What is AI, technicalities, algorithms? <coughs> Let's forget about it. But why it is necessary and how it is necessary for the survival of each and every bus? That's what probably he will be able to inspire and let you know. And probably this will also be a, some kind of an inspiration for all of us to get involved into the activities of artificial intelligence and machine learning. What is being expected and what is being presented there, there is a huge difference, huge gap. And what is required for that one, probably each of us can understand and start working into that area. It's not only the faculties again. In addition to the faculties, the thought process, the culture, the atmosphere has to be created, cultivated among the students itself. As I have been saying in morning also in a welcome party, uh, not a party but uh, welcome address to the first year rights. Planning on these activities, have a concrete plan, have a concrete opportunities is very important. And we at BCRC again, I as a leader, so with the support from society, I am sure confident to create an opportunities in all these areas. To grab and work is your responsibility and literally it will make a difference, multiple ways. Here we are, all of us are here from the teaching perspective point of view. And we have seen in the NAC, probably I think most of you have gone through the experience with respect to the interaction of the NAC people and what was being expected. Some of them are from the CO point of view, PSO point of view, PO point of view and the connectivity with respect to the technology and the course being delivered. Unless and until the complete understanding of all these courses are there, the links, output etc. 
a clarity in all this thing is very important to support this such kind of a lectures such kind of opportunities such kind of a uh, maybe talks are really necessary and i'm sure probably i had heard his talk but i'm sure today after his talk you and your team will be surely going into the details and uh, probably i think start leveraging uh, some kind of an advantages start thinking of leveraging an advantages or the information that we have in uh, ai and ml as as again we have been saying if today you ask a question whether a computer applications or computers are necessary for this one you can imagine what would happen if the computers are not there i am repeating the same thing again and again same thing with with respect to ai and ml early the way you catch a bus you will be a matured you will be leader if you are missing the bus as maybe some of the answers he will be giving if what will happen if we do not go ahead based upon what is the expected things from the national and international marketers i welcome uh, our guest uh, to his talk and probably i think uh, his experience and uh, all these things will really make us enlightened about the facts figures and the future of the artificial intelligence summit in machine learning thank you Now may I have the honor to introduce our chief guest to all the faculty members. Though he was introduced to us on the stage of Moksha, uh, I would like to um, give a brief introduction of our chief guest once more. Mr. Kunna is a global artificial intelligence thought leader and AI evangelist and AI influential. AI transformation due to rapidly changing technology has always been and still is a challenging task. Kundana being a well-known global IT delivery and technology professional and RD M-Tech in computational intelligence is prominent in AI and emerging technologies such as computer vision, natural language processing, predictive analytics, anomaly detection, information retrieval, and robotics. A global leader in AI research and implementation, he strongly believes that AI may impose an existential risk for India, and he is doing his best to not only propel, but also democratize AI by establishing research and development oriented AI innovation hubs and exchange in collaboration with industry and academia, but also designing and delivering innovative, easy to grasp practical knowledge on multiple platforms. Having worked at global IT leadership level for more than 30 years, Kundana is not only an AI evangelist, but doubles up also a well-respected coach and a guru at with the AI. He explores the societal and economic implications of AI and ML adoption as well as looks into the possibilities of public benefit and ensuring level playing field for India in upcoming AI disruption. A big picture fellow, Kundana helps to look at AI and emerging technologies from a broader perspective. It doesn't matter what kind of government you believe in, we ought to care about effectiveness of government, about how government achieves the outcomes that it wants. This imminent AI upheaval expects a different kind of efficiency to ripple throughout the government. Kundana understands there is a huge value potential for governments that use AI for governance, business as well for national security. The best way to get started with AI is by identifying the major pain points in a program that is amenable to AI disruption.
Second, you want to make sure there is enough data made available through different platforms and programs to train and deploy an AI system effectively. He believes India has been a trailblazer in digital transformation and good candidate for AI leadership and global dominance. As we have the data to train and implement a number of cognitive programs and launch numerous productive applications with humongous societal impact. Kundana, as today's tech leader, is potent pioneer, blazing new paths new few would go down and having the courage to see them all the way through to the end. As a pioneer, he has been creating thinking through, sharing unique ways, continually testing constructively disruptive ideas and ideas to ensure India's place on upcoming AI pedestal as global leader. This is what makes Kundana an AI thought leader. So here is our chief guest, sir, the stage is all yours. Okay, but 
I believe more in human resilience. I believe that probably we, if we work on it, we create possibility, we do inventive innovations rightly, we set up the policies right, we create the sandboxes, then probably we can work with artificial intelligence and that will change the entire world. So we need to understand that. So let's go to what what they're trying to tell us is there's a very same thing to see. It is the astrophysicists, scientists, writers, they are telling us. And recently Bill Gates came out and he said that why can't we understand it? Part hame samaj mein kyu nahi aa rahi hai? This was Bill Gates. Okay, he owns Microsoft. You know that, right? So we will be when the artificial intelligence will reach an A size stage or artificial super intelligence stage, we will go extreme. That is what they are trying to tell. So let's try to understand why they are telling us. Okay? But before we go there, if we you believe that AI is not around you, you are mistaken. AI is all around you. Okay? So if you watch Netflix, the recommendation engine is based on AI. You have mobile phones, you have got Google Assistant, if you have got Android, you have got Google Assistant, that's they are. If your face is being recognized by your phone, that's they are. Your fingerprint is being recognized by phone, that is they are. Okay, uh, you buy on Amazon, Amazon has got an AI engine which actually knows who you are, what you are buying, what time you are buying, what kind of product you are buying, what quality of product you are buying. They know everything about you. AI is knowing everything about you now. So, the way we travel, the way we do business, the way we shop, the way we do politics, the way we socialize, AI is everywhere. Let me give you a few examples to make you understand that. The way we do politics, right? You know, uh, Trump became the president of America. It is touted that Facebook AI actually helped him becoming president of America. Just before the election, the day before the election, Facebook AI, Facebook AI is very powerful. If you go on Facebook and upload your photo, you tag it, you will find out that he knows who you are, he knows your wife, he knows your kids, he knows your friends, and the names will start cropping up as you go on tagging it. That is AI. AI is recognizing you. So Facebook AI sent a message out to all the right wingers in America that your friends are going to vote. Are you? And then, when that message and that there was 12 photos, down below, thumbnails down below of your closest friend. That resulted in 3,75,000 additional people voting out. Okay, that is the prediction. That is 3,75,000 people went out and voted. And Trump became president of America with only 1,25,000 votes. That who in three counties. Wisconsin and this county. He became the president. Only 1,25,000 votes. Otherwise, Hillary would have been the president of America. Okay? So, the way we do politics, the way we shop. Let's try to understand. Amazon, if you look at, it's a hundred fourteen billion dollar cost. Out of hundred and fourteen billion dollar, it spends around fifty seven billion dollar only on fulfillment and logistics. So if you go on Amazon and you will order things, what will happen? You go, you buy things, you pay for it, and somebody next day a guy will come and deliver it to you. Right? Allah Dil Wazmi Ake Kaman Deki Chalta. Now, if you order five things, do it. Five things. Five different people will come and deliver things. Right? That adds to the cost of fulfillment. That adds to the cost of logistics uh, for Amazon. So, Amazon is experimenting. That can be leverage AI. And by the way, AWS, Amazon Cloud, is the biggest consumer of AI or quality services. Okay? So, they are working on that can they leverage AI. So, what they want to do? The current model is shop and ship. So you shop first, and when you pay for it, they ship it to your home, right? Now they want to change the model to from shop and ship to ship and shop. So what they want to do, they are leveraging AI to predict. They are looking at it. They know what you are searching on Google. They know what you are watching on TV. They know exactly what you are looking at products on Amazon. So all that data set, or on Facebook advertisement, which advertisement will stop for how many seconds? Okay, which advertisement you click can go away immediately, which advertisement you are waiting. So using at all the data sets, they plan to predict that what are the things you are going to buy. And one fine day what will happen? You will wake up, you will open the door and there will be a box in front of you. Only one guy will walk into your society. He will come with hundred of boxes. He will put your box in front of your door, your neighbor's box in front of his door and he will walk up. Okay, the same
same guy will walk. You will wake up, you will find the Amazon box, you will open and you will be amazed to find whatever you required that day is there in that box. It, will, it can be your milk, it can be your vegetables, it can be a mobile phone, okay, it can be a computer. Whatever you required that day, AI will predict that that will be there. You will take out all those what you require, leave the rest of the thing in the box. The same guy will come and take away the box and do it with build only for what you have taken out. That's the prediction model. So they want to change the model from shop and ship to ship and shop. They will ship you first. That is the power of AI they want to utilize. You know, they also leverage it for predicting who are the starters who will become a unicorn, a billion dollar firm. So they gave it gave them AI 114 starters and asked AI to predict. And AI does the multi dimensional data crunch. So we humans are very much limited. So somebody wants to buy a share, they will talk to his friend, they will, his friend will say, hey, why don't you buy this share of Tata or Wipro um, or Infosys or whatever. Why you buy that share, it is doing good here. And we'll, we'll choose that data set and we go and buy that, right? That is a single dimensional data set. If you, we, that is a crunchy business. But AI doesn't stop there. So AI will take that feedback, but AI will also do what? It will go into the company, understand who are the directors, these directors, which company they were as their director to, how much companies they have made succeeded, what is the weather today, all the data it will take it, okay? How the sales have performed earlier, so the people who are buying it, are they going to buy next of it or not, all the data it will take it up, crunch the data and then predict which company shares need to be bought. Similarly, so we call that a multi dimensional data crunch. AI is very capable in doing it. So they looked at 114 companies, and they have predicted 14 out of them to be become the unicorn. And believe it, gentlemen, out of these 14, five actually became the unicorn. Five actually became our 7,000 crore company. Okay, so that is the power AI is bringing on the table. I call it the great decoupling. You know what the great decoupling is? By 2000, human productivity actually started going down. So in IT industry, specifically, if you go to companies like Wipro or Capgemini or uh, whatever name you want to take it up, uh, uh, these companies have got processes uh, written. Uh, they have got Six Sigma, they have got Sim Level 5, all these processes, I have the time for this one, all the processes are written. They know how to leverage eight hours of human life, or more than that, of human life every day, how to use it. Okay, so they have maximized their productivity. But now they are finding, after 2000, the productivity by labor, services, knowledge, all that is going down. The family income is going down, the salary is going down, because the human productivity cannot be taken up more than that. But the capital intensive productivity, which is based on machines, software and data, platforms like robotic process automation, okay, DevOps, or robots, leveraging robots for doing one factory. So I can give you one example. In Volkswagen factory in Munich, when I was there, they have today only 5,000 people working in that factory. Once upon a time, they had 50,000 people working in that factory. They were producing around in one car 36 days. Today they are, have got 5,000 people and they have got robotic arms. The car is moving on the conveyor belt and there are multiple robotic arms. They are putting doors, wheels, painting the car, putting the glass and everything there the robotic arms are doing. And there are humans are there, 5,000 people, who are just managing the soap. Okay, now they are producing one car 3.6 days. So the productivity has increased by 10, 100 million times. I mean, 100, 1,000 times the productivity has gone up. So that is that is how the productivity leveraging machines and software and data that is going up. Okay. Now, if you if you want to understand the next part of it, the income inequality. Now, what has happened? With this kind of automation of productivity, today 90% of the money has got, 90% of the money is in hands of 10% of the people. So people like uh, Bill Gates, people like Ambani, Adani, Berkowitz, these people have got 90% of the money in their hands. Okay? And 10% of the money is in our hands. 90% of it. Give us 10% of our money, 90% of it is in our hands. This is how the today's world is. And this is also distribution in country's terms. But with AI, that distribution is going to become more acute. 
percent of the money in this world will be in hands of one percent of people, and one percent money will be left out to the ninety-nine percent. That is what kind of an automation and income inequality AI is going to generate. Okay, this AI is going to generate. And three things will happen. First is the sale in production. So what will happen? The skilled labor they will get replaced. People like us who are skilled in certain area, we will get replaced by robots because robots work for 24 into 7. That is an AI game set up, and we work only 8 hours. So first of all, all the skilled workers will start getting replaced by AI, AI based robots. Okay, that is sale in production. Second, what will happen is the investment flow. They will come and ask you. Your factory, your company. How much automation do you use? You say, hey, I have got 50% of automation. They say, no, we'll not give you any money. We'll not give you loan. We'll not be investing in you. The FDI will stop. Foreign, foreign direct investment will not cover you. You will not get money, loan to actually do it. They will ask you to bring an automation level to 90%. Only 10% human population will solve problems. Okay? So the, the investment flow will stop. This will be a boon, a pain, especially for India. We have got 22.5 percent young population waiting for labour jobs, right? We are so proud of that. कि हमारे पास young लोग हैं और labour है हमारे पास. But वो labour की जरूरत खत्म हो जाएगी. So this labour which we are so proud of today will become a pain for us. Drop बन जाएगा हमारे. Okay, so that investment flow will stop. The third, what will happen? You must, have, you must, have, you, must have, you know. That once upon a time, child labor was employed by lot of firms across the globe, and companies like Amazon, Google, and other companies. They said, no, we will not buy from you. If you employ child labor, we will not buy from you. Right? The term will change that way. They will start saying, telling you that if you employ humans, we will not buy from you. Okay? So you need to employ robots only. Otherwise, we will not buy from you. So the terms of trade will change. So this will be increasing the income inequality more, right? 99 percent to 1 percent. 1 percent population having 99 percent of the money, and 1 for 99 percent of the population will have only 1 percent of the money left in their hands. This will this will ensure the sustainability of countries like that, because the substitutability in advanced nations will be so high. They will be doing it, and we will be not able to substitute it in India. Our sustainability will be at risk, and that is the narrative which we carry. With maturity of this technology, AI, uh, the AI maturity, countries like India may not exist. We may not exist as a nation state. As a raft, ham sahab nahi bache. Okay, because the money and the power is only one percent of it, or one percent of countries in this world. Okay, so our sustainability will be at risk. If you look at this, this is the Dr. Hyphen, and if you look at this, all AI-based technology is currently either on innovation phase or the top of this curve, or even actually from the plateau of productivity. So AI technologies are the only technologies which is coming in generation. They are the technologies being on computer vision, being in speech recognition. They are the technologies which are coming in. That is the AI progression today. And some of these technologies, like in speech and all, they have become more mainstream. Lot of companies have already adopted that. By 2025, our revenue from AI will be around 35 to 40 billion dollars. 35 to 40 billion dollars will be only money coming in from AI technology. Okay, so that is a huge market which is being created. Let me try to explain this to you that method. That if you want to define, because we are talking AI, so let's try to understand what AI is. Okay? If you search AI, you will find out multiple words: neural networks, planning, ontology, machine learning, uh, perception, knowledge, cognitive system. These are all words which actually define AI. AI is a large word, encompassing word, and these are the things which machine learning and all are part of the AI world. But if you want to define AI, you can put into two buckets. One bucket will AI. Is actually helping us making decisions, okay? But we as humans are still making the decisions. But AI is supporting us. Now there are two kinds of AI. One is hardwired; it doesn't learn anything. Once we have deployed it, it goes on doing same thing again, 
and again and again and again. So that is the hardware inspection system, that is an assisted inspection. But there are adopted systems too. So they help us in making decisions, but we learn in process. We call them augmented intelligence. So assisted intelligence doesn't learn from deployed, but augmented intelligence keeps on learning. So if, if we make a decision, it will wait for us. Then why we have made that decision? And then next time it will make a better decision for us. Okay, that's an augmented intelligence. And these so these are two kinds of AI. The third kind is when we are not in the loop. We are not making decisions. AI is making a decision. The first is uh, automation, which is industrial automation. Okay? And this automation is basically to the, I talked about that car being manufactured on the environment. That is an automation, industrial automation. And second is when that is hardwired. The second is automated intelligence. It is adopted. It is we humans are not in loop. So the autonomous car which is being driven today has reached level 3. It is delivering pizza, it is delivering you from one place to another. These autonomous vehicles are basically autonomous intelligence. It has got a lidar, it has got a ultrasonic radar, it has got a high resolution camera and it can drive. It is learning. It is already learned, driven for the last 50 years. A 50 years of technology set has been developed into this autonomous intelligence. They are learning from it. Those never existed 50 years, but 50 years of human experience they have gained by driving day and night on American streets or wherever they are being developed. Okay? Every company like Google and now Uber and Google, they are all developing automobile vehicles. Okay, very soon it will be there on Indian streets too. So what is the roadmap? Roadmap is that applied AI is only here that it is already on the platform of productivity, industries that are supplying, but artificial general intelligence, now I define what artificial general intelligence is, it is coming up, it has been triggered already. So there are three kind of AI systems because we are talking AI, one is artificial narrow intelligence and artificial narrow intelligence is the machine learning world which we are living in. In next few years, this artificial narrow intelligence will move to artificial general intelligence. Now what is the difference between a narrow intelligence and general intelligence? Narrow intelligence actually operates upon the structured database. So if some of them must be from coming from computer science, they know what is a relational database system. And in a relational database system, the data is structured. Okay? It is put into columns, it tables that. So that is a structured database. But artificial general intelligence will work on all structured data. And we humans work on all structured data. So we have got Tacitus, we have got olfactory organs, so we have got the we have got the hearing capability, so touch, so many kisakti, so many kisakti, hearing capability, the test birds of ours and beacons. These are our five can in the area, right? These are the five areas where we collect data and we are we become operational. That is our reality. If our arms are gone, then we become a pangu, right? Our reality is lost. So that is what is unstructured data. We make reality out of it. So the artificial general intelligence will make reality out of the five senses what we have. Okay? That is the artificial general intelligence. Second, artificial narrow intelligence, if you can learn one thing and do the other thing, then the first thing is done. This is what we call catastrophic forgetfulness. Okay? That is the narrow intelligence. That is the machine which we are currently working on. But general intelligence, Whatever, like it will be like that. If we learn cycling and swimming as a childhood, any point of your life, after even 50 years, somebody gives a cycle, we are able to drive, right? If somebody throws in water, we can still able to swim, right? That's the general intelligence. It happens. So artificial general intelligence actually will retain the knowledge of what he has learned last. Okay? So new algorithms are being developed which help them will retain the knowledge just like that. That is what the general intelligence is. From general intelligence to super intelligence, the difference is AGI will be like human being, equal to us. But artificial super intelligence will be equal to all humans put together. Jitne bhe log hai hamare dunia mein, jitne kitabe hai aapne likhi hai aap par, un sab knowledge ko agar ek jagar le aayye, to tab usko hum artificial super intelligence ko. That is ASI. Okay? We'll try to understand more better. But one thing, Gentlemen, if you look from this, how much you are able to see, I don't know. But use it intelligence. Okay, spaceship from navigation. Let's take the spaceship. All this makes us human. Musical, 
non-medical, statistical, interpersonal, body chemistry, all these intelligence which we have, which we have to do good things.
one thing we need to understand that what will happen if AI walks in. And one thing which I always try to tell you guys is that first innovation, industrial revolution 1.0, it happened due to steam. We were not party to it, India. India was not party to it. Okay? It happened in Europe. They developed machine guns by steam. They developed steam chips. They developed railway engines. Okay? And the resultant kya tha, natija kya tha, hum gulam se do so saal. Right? Industrial revolution 2.0 happened due to electricity. It created the great divide, the developed nations and underdeveloped nations. We are still an underdeveloped nation. We are developing nations. We call ourselves developing nations. Okay? But they are developed nations because they consume more electricity. 27 times higher every household consumes more energy. Right? So, it created a great divide. Computing, this was industrial revolution 3.0. It happened due to computing. That is where we caught up the world. We are today producing 287 billion dollars of ID produce, right? We are 55 percent of the all the ID needs in the world is fulfilled from India. Okay, we have got 70 percent of the companies which are six sigma companies or CM level five companies. 70 percent of the companies in the world is in India. Okay, so we caught up the world. World actually wake up to the fact that Indians are also smart people. And I will give you one example. I was in Atlanta. I went to take a house in Amri Apartments in Alpha Leta and uh, that lady, a quite beautiful lady by the way, so she asked me that uh, Mr. Lal, where are you from? So I said, uh, I'm from India and then she asked me, what do you do? I said, I'm a software engineer and she said, oh, you are a smarty. So later on I realized that word is smarty which she has applied on me and by the way that Amri apartment was a white company. There they don't allow you. They don't allow brown people like us. Okay, they don't allow black people and brown people like us. So it is all white people who live in that. But this he said, you are most welcome in Sikar. You are a smarty. So then I realized that the smarty is denoting a lot of respect to us because Indians are earning good in America. They are living better life. Okay? They are investing better. They are saving better. So they, they are calling us smarty. Okay? So that is what we end up doing.
seven of them sought two bedroom apartments that he was booked, gave 32 quarter in the production for the perfect income. So the technology is not there, but then quantum is going to change. Quantum computing is completely different technology set. It operates upon three ways, which we call it entanglement, zero, one. Our current technology operates upon zero and one only, right, off and on. That has created all your VLSI chips in your mobile phone. The Rigidity Quantum Computer it did it in 7 seconds. 7 seconds may have been So it is so powerful. Your, we have already reached 228 qubits. Rigidity. IBM has got 72. Microsoft has got 54 qubits. Of, this is already available. Quantum computers. We call this quantum arena. Okay. Very soon it will jump up to 500 qubits. 500 qubits quantum computer will be more powerful. And that is analog quantum. Okay, it will be more powerful than all the computing capability on this earth put together. Actually, taking 
a backflip. And if I've got time, I'll show you some movies also. It's taking a backflip also. Okay, so that is that is AI, which is walking, carrying better, taking a backflip. Okay, it can or even walk on ice. So where is AI today? If you look at from the human parity angle, on on object recognition, human parity though in 2016 it was 96 percent closer to us. On the speech recognition, because it was making 5.1 percent, we made 5.5 percent either. It is better than us. Okay, by 2017. On machine reading and comprehension, by 2018 it was 88 percent, 49 percent closer to us. On machine translation, March 2018, it was 30 percent closer to us. So that was few years back. I've got a data which is few years back. I don't know where it has reached today by 2020. But more than 10 percent search now being read by voice, and not long ago it was less than 1 percent. So now the kids who are going to see that the data that they search on Google, they are going to see. Google, please find out. Siri, why, why, book over for me. Right? Now the kids are going to see that the kids are going to see that the kids are going to see that. That is increasing. It is increased by 10 percent already. So I want to cover this. But all machine learning and paradigms are being used for multiple areas. Okay? They have got penetrated AI. So you must have heard about the gases. Now the gases is not required. Your mobile phone will have an AI. It will know exactly what you are doing. And if you do something, you will do it. Okay? It will tell you what you are doing. Okay? It will tell you what you are doing. It will tell you what you are doing. They call it penetrated AI. They are developing one part. अगर ये अगर AI देखेगा ये वन पॉइंट में तो वो कोई भी डिजिट को पहचान सकता है किसी के द्वारा लिखा हुआ है जीरो टू नाइन जीरो टू टू नाइन ओके डिफरेंट स्पीड दे हैव ऑलरेडी डेवलप्ड ओपन AI फाउंडेशन और इफ यू गिव इट अ वर्ड इट यू राइट कैन राइट द एंटायर वो उसको एक सब दे देंगे वो पूरी किताब लिख सकता है इट इज सो पॉपुलर एंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड देयर इज अ रिस्क डीपर देयर एंड फॉर वो so there is a company known as DeepMind. It developed a game, Lee Sidalgo. Okay. Uh, why Lee Sidalgo? I call it Lee Sidalgo. Because that game actually learned to play from humans and defeated the world champion in Go game. Go game is a very complex game. It is more complex than your chess and all. So it defeated Lee Sidalgo, who was a world champion, the Korean and a world champion, defeated him. Okay, at that time, the chances of human beings to win from Lee Sidol Go was 4%. 4%. That is, from the 4 games, that is, from the Indians, that is, from the Indians, that is, from the Indians. Now, that company was bought by Google. They developed another system, which they call it AlphaGo. And AlphaGo did what? It actually played with Go game, Lee Sidol Go only. It never played with any human being. And in 40 days, it knew, it learned so much, which we humans have generated in the last 3,000 years. It learned all that knowledge in 40 days. And today, if you play with AlphaGo, your chance of winning, human chance of winning from AlphaGo is zero. You cannot win that. And now, but I if I get 15 million dollars, why are they developing this kind of technology? When balloon will be up, gentlemen, tomorrow there will be war with companies, the countries like America or somewhere, they will leverage this kind of technology. Our commanders will not have an access to this kind of technology. Okay? And we will never win that war. That is, that, that is what they are trying to do. They will be here. So they say that we humans have become intelligent and there is a variety of problems. He talks about causal, the topic maximizing the kind of intelligence. He said, भगवान ने हमें इंटेलिजेंस नहीं बनाया, हम इंटेलिजेंस बने हैं खुद, ओके बट सेकंड लॉक कर रहा है, वी हैव बिकम इंटेलिजेंस, बिकॉज़ मोर एंड मोर कंप्लेक्स इंवॉल्वमेंट यू विल हैंडल, मोर एंड मोर चैलेंजेस यू विल फेस, मोर एंड मोर फ्यूचर हिस्ट्रीज यू विल फेस, यू विल बिकम
Because that what will ensure that what we have what what we have developed from amoeba, the human brain, now it will get merged with the biodiesel system. We call it biodiesel system. AI will merge with them. And countries have companies like Neuralink, which Elon Musk has launched that company, if you don't know, please Google it. Uh, that company is developing a small chip which can be embedded in your brain. Okay? And then you will be leveraging AI. So if you have deep things that you can leverage that company. That is what we uh, mean by doing. That we call it biotech. So currently AI is the focus area. They are planning to create evolution of yours. They have planned to download your human brain and create the brain which we call it evolution on the cloud. So you will be, you will be on the cloud. They are developing more brain evolution as a platform for creating brain They are not working, but somewhere it is being worked upon and developed. IBM is working upon brain in a box. It is held by Indian fighters. Okay, they are working on brain in a box by 2020. See the AI. When we take birth, we have got only 30% of the brain. Over 21 years, we developed the rest of the 70% of the brain. So they are talking about similar kind of technology set using neuromorphic computing to develop an AI and add more and more brain to it from seed AI. So it will start learning from the environment, we will add more brain to it, it will become or, or chips to it. Obviously that brain is not our organic brain, it's chips. So those neuromorphic chips will be added and it become a full-fledged AI by in, But the difference will be, we become a full-fledged human In 21 years, it will develop full-fledged AI in 21 months. That will be the difference. Brain computer interface, tomorrow you will not die, you will not give them gestures. You will just think and AI will interact with you. So AI can take off, this is eminent intelligence, this is totally eminent gentleman. Let's try to understand why we should be afraid of AI. Okay? Look at this. This is a human being. We operate between 90 to 140 IQ. Right? Go down below, this is chimpanzee. This operates between 30 to 40 IQ. You go to a chimpanzee and try to explain algebra to him or trigonometric theorem to him. वो आपके साथ क्या करेगा मेरे को नहीं मालूम लेकिन मारेगा जरूर, okay? So that is what it is doing. This chimpanzee. So we human beings, of we operate between 90 to 140 IQ level. Einstein was 140. आप लोग एक तो 20 एक तो 30 होंगे और मैं तो 90 हूँ मैं हमेशा बोलता हूँ मैं 90 हूँ क्योंकि मेरी वाइफ हमेशा बोलती है कि तुमको कुछ समझ में नहीं आता, okay? And then there is chicken. Chicken operates between 10 to 15 IQ level. And what do we do with it? Roj Marti Khaja. Right? Chicken chili, chicken tandoori, chicken what not. Right? Every day we are eating them in the road. So we as human beings who operate between 90 to 140 IQ level, we are eating chicken which is 10 to 15 IQ level daily in and out. They are killing them. Go down below, that is that. We are learning from them. That is known as farm intelligence. Who drove the car and will take some flight sectors that is known as farm intelligence. And we have also got 5 to 10 IQ level. What we have done? We have done this. 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 Ultraviolet rain, trap, dead, dakwa chaps. I don't know what else we have got developed. Chemical warfare again. Right? So we, we humans operating between 90 to 140 IQ level has virtually operated in down below, everybody. Now if you look at that, from the Earth perspective, this is a balanced range of intelligence on the Earth. Artificial super intelligence will operate at 1500 IQ level. Artificial level intelligence will operate at 5000 IQ level. You can well imagine, gentlemen, that if we go to them, why we should be afraid of them, right? It will talk about innovation, invention, thought processes, strategy directions, we will never even have them to understand. And the fear of humans from artificial general intelligence to super intelligence is, we call it perverse intelligence. So, if we have made a calculation, ATI or ASI, and we say, we have to go to the book, we have to go to the book, and we have to go to the book, we have to go to the book, who is a human being? If a human being is a human being, who is a human being? Now this is known as perverse intelligence. 
it can bring the whole thing over. So that is the fear which comes from artificial superintelligence and So we have got two options, gentlemen. Either we'll go extinct or we'll become important. Our devotees in the meeting, a very simple answer is that they have made super power. They have made it. They have not made it. They have not made it. They have made it. They have made it. That is what companies like Calico and all are working. They are trying to develop that amrit, which is DNA based amrit, to develop that, which DNA will be injected into us and we will stop aging. And this will be developed, this being developed literally in AI. So where we are, we are near to a bunch of city marks in Brahma Hayat. It's a bunch of Nava and AI to later. Or it will be too early. It will be too early to put five million years on the bunch of city marks in Brahma. Very soon it will reach the land base. And then it will reach to us, the human race. And then the collective human intelligence, the super intelligence, it will develop that. Okay, so that is very clear next time. Then they developed ICBM, Intercontinental Ballistic 
with the entire BM, the top wall, that light. And they immediately understood they can bomb any country sitting in their own country. So what they did, they put up a ban on cryogenic engines. It took 25 years, Pakit Khan laga hame apna paada rocket made me. Now they are developing them. Say now, the signal set. Okay, they are developing signal set. That is asking to super internet. Okay. I don't know if you have seen this movie or not, but say now, that's the part of the movie. And that is a thing that it can destroy the entire globe in one point. That is what the technology they are developing now. And we will never get an answer. And we are not on the industrial revolution 4.0 country. If you look at the top 100 companies in the globe on the air, there is none of them are Indian companies. We have nothing to do That could change. We have to change that. We have to develop our own companies, which are original in for profit. We have to do Amazon has made it, so we have to do it, so we have to do it. We have to start thinking of our own. We are not doing it at this point. We are not on the industry of the world. If you look at top 100 companies in the globe, they are all going to Northern America. China is taking a very fast investment, but we India is not there at all. No catching up. If this happens, continues, there will be no catching up. AI investment rate of maximum investment is happening in IT industry. Government is making 2.5% healthcare and all other hospitals and healthcare, they are making some investment. But maximum investment is happening in IT industry on AI and today. Every field, being automotive, manufacturing, consumer, finance, agriculture, energy, healthcare, public, social, media, telecom, all are impacted by AI now. In some degree or other it is impacted. They are leveraging real time optimization, starting optimization. Predictive analytics, predictive maintenance, work, radical personalization, discover new trends and anomalies, forecasting. And if you look at the topic forces, they are using real time optimization. And that is the answer. Okay? So, a lot of these concepts are being utilized and leveraged by AI to take us to the next level. I am not covering it. Uh, it was for telecom industry. They are using a lot of things in AI already in telecom. But one thing I would like love to tell you, that wherever there is an ROI, okay, impact is there, and it is high impact, and data is available, AI is being used. Okay, so wherever there is data, and there is an ROI, AI is being implemented. That is something we should realize. And wherever there is data is not available, ROI is pretty high, there is data acquisition strategy companies are putting in. They are putting up a sensors and all to capture the data. So we are not talking about hyper companies with this enterprise. This is a new enterprise, big academia, big industry, big government. All are becoming hyper digital interactive. Hyper competitive digital enterprise. They are talking about foresight. We will not wait. Something will happen and then we will write SOP. We are going to predict things. Okay. So that is what the foresight is, from hindsight to foresight, from imperative to declarative, from data link to data everywhere, so it's not completely abundant. And data will be not a modern document, it will become an opportunity. From central authority, world will be a distributed in nature, more just, more fair world. So if you don't have an AI strategy, you are going to die in the world that is coming. That is David Bain. He was the CEO of e That is what he is telling us. So being an academia also, if you don't have a strategy for AI, you don't know about AI, you are going to that. Okay, that is what it is. We'll be out of our job very soon. What kind of jobs will be gone? Jobs which will lead compassion, which leads creativity and strategy, those jobs will be left out. Jobs which doesn't need compassion and can be optimized will be gone and That will be not left to human beings very soon. This will be gone. Creative and strategic, compassion not needed. Gone. Optimize can be optimized and compassion not needed. Gone. Jobs like a daily companion will be left out. Bude logo ke saan bhi bude logo ke daily companion ho ke wahan bhi human being will be there. Because it needs compassion. Okay, lot of compassion and cannot be optimized. So no jobs will be left out first. Jobs like CEOs will be left out first. Job doctor's jobs will be probably left out first. Okay. So look at when there is a creativity, human will be still there. They will leverage AI. But as soon as the creativity goes down, AI will take over. Optimize compassion not needed, AI will take over.
bullet. Where there is a compaction is needed but can be optimized, the AI will be a big force there. And this is the job which will be still left out with these three duty strategy and compassion. Humans will liberate the AI. Okay? So we have to be compassionate. We have to relate to our people. Right? If you have got the compassion, and you have got the creativity, you will still survive in the job. All jobs below 60k will be left, will be gone. Jobs like waiters, retail classes, personal class assistants, store class, these jobs will be the more gone. Even teachers jobs are not going to be left out yet. So that is very critical in academia, that even teaching AI is doing it. It is translating well, it is creating the content, it is delivering the content, so you need to understand that a deep thing is there, you will not need it tomorrow. So what we need to do? We need to become critical thinkers. We need to push the better. We need to be in the start living an absolutely curious life. We need to get does not get easily overwhelmed. Math and science Otherwise, we'll be not left into this pocket. You know this gentleman? <laughs> right? Both in. He recently came out and said, Artificial intelligence is the future not only for Russia but for all humankind. It comes with colossal opportunity but also threats that are difficult to understand. Whoever becomes a leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. They are very clear. They know why they are investing into AI technology. They are investing into AI technologies to rule the world. They are very clear. The words are very, very clear. We need to understand that. If you look from that perspective, look at this. You have been pumping in $3 trillion into AI. $3 trillion is our economy. India's economy is $3 trillion. Modi ji bol rahe ki $5 trillion hum kar denge. But $3 trillion hamari economy. Itna paisa wo AI ke laga rahe hai. China is pumping in $147 trillion into AI. It's an enemical nation to us. वो हमारा दुश्मन देश है, वो 147 बिलियन डॉलर एआई में लगा रहा है। हम क्या लगा रहे हैं? 300 करोड़। एआई पब्लिकेशन में चाइना है ऑलरेडी टेकन एंड डी, लेकिन पब्लिसिटी फोर पेपर्स को एआई देख चाइना, चाइना अमेरिका। ओके। मैक्सिमम इन्वेस्टमेंट इस हाफ इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका इन
Not necessary in the end, but yes, the lecture was expected. Uh, as I have seen, there was no technicality with respect to air, only from the vision. Thanks a lot, uh, Kundal Mahalji. In fact, it was really a pleasure uh, to have this visionary of uh, this. Is my second time I am uh, uh, having these lectures in, again, and it, I really enjoy each and every moment of this one. The question to be asked to ourselves is again: uh, where we are presently, where we need to go ahead, and what other things need to be done ahead and so on. And uh, it's really again, again, I am repeating what he has said. The same thing. It is really, really a need of an hour to ensure that we are in the AI field and so on. Irrespective of whether we are from computer science, whether we are from machine or maybe mathematics, science, etc. Each and every domain, we have to leverage the AI and so on. So it's a time for all of us to join this particular group. And unless and until, if you, as I said, he has also said, if you do not go, you will be lagged behind and then again backwardness and all other things will be coming into picture. Second thing is, it's not the case, it's not reachable. We are reachable, each of us, it's not the case that, okay, everything is happening in North America or uh, maybe the Western world, we cannot, no, it's we can do. We are doing, people are doing, they are contributing also. But taking up this bus as early as possible and joining the group collectively, not replicatively, and then 
publications explain that automatically will come into picture specifically what he has said morning also IP this we are really really lacking behind and specifically understanding this scenario understanding and importance of this case is very very important for all of us as well again he has said education institutions today again uh, as I think in somewhere I had also explained there is one university in US which doesn't have uh, not US but Canada which doesn't have the area of not more than maybe let's say 100 square feet or at the most 1500 square feet they are having more number of students as compared to any conventional university in India the reason is again the same thing is there is a strong probability of replicating this and unless and until we wake up and move ahead and grab whatever the things are there and make ourselves available with respect to this technology and bring our since as we as a teacher it's also our responsibility to make aware these things to the among the students also he has said again i'm also saying in fact students are most smarter than us also but then there should be a cycle interaction and to go into that uh, i think uh, similar such lectures uh, will be held similar such guidance will be there again i'm repeating the same thing we at an institution our responsibility is to create an opportunity for all of you people it's your responsibility to grab it and go ahead and bring the culture of this uh, recent or maybe again in afternoon or in morning I was saying each of us should be able to understand visualize where I am presently what is expected at state level national level and international level in your own field not necessary you cross have a cross level but at least in your own field what is expected to be visualize this and plan your journey also I hope again uh, this should have been enlightening you wake up you with respect to the expectations that are being needed as in uh, some kind of a standardization of an institution point of view and uh, I'm sure uh, you will be joining this journey uh, for the progress and so on. Thank you. And I thank once again Kundan Lal, uh, and we will have an association, we will always join and uh, probably in our progress also you will be a part of our uh, some kind of a movie we are planning to sign up so that uh, a lot of projects are being transferred here and each of us will be part of this particular group and again I am saying the kind you might have imagined the kind of work that is still yet to be done so it's not the case that whether uh, he or she or some 50 people are working and there will not be a work to be done in fact there is a work to be done for more than the people presently available in, uh, on the planet of earth also so infinite things are there lot of things are there only the creativity etc identification those things are there and uh, joining the group as well thanks once again and uh, we'll surely uh, have a journey together in the field of AI and uh, I'm sure I'll be joining with my team also thank you